Welcome back, folks and friends. Connecting Dots here. Today's date is Friday, December the 12th, 2014. Okay, I'm going to need all your help here because um, someone's kind of losing hope and getting any money back from being defrauded. I'm like, no, 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 this is a strong community. We can do something, and I'll get into that. I'll share the email here at the very end. But basically, if you've been following my Fukushima videos here, busting uh, the scammers online, the promoters, and what's been going on, I think it's become very aware here that this Expedition for Life is nothing but a fraud. And now, one of the things that I've been mentioning is how I've been, been in contact with Jeff Palco, the guy who uh, donated the $16,000, actually went in debt here, and I'll show you the paperwork coming up here. I've got the checks and everything to show you. But basically, he's gone in debt here because initially, like many of you, because he doesn't live on the West Coast, doesn't have access to the ocean like I do and many others here, he, f he fell for the BS that was promoted by Beautiful Girl by Dana, where he went out initially on that first nine-day trek on the Sunshine Coast. We were told he went, he traveled, yeah, he investigated 200 kilometers of the Sunshine Coast. Then we found out later on it was only three and a half hours in a boat one day. So he didn't do 200 kilometers. And then we later found out that he was actually traveling in a car with a friend of his along the highway going, stopping at different provincial parks and taking pictures of obviously areas that kind of looked like there was nothing there to anyone who didn't know anything about the ocean or didn't flow up, up any rocks. Like I said, very poor quality uh, footage and uh, images only to promote a lie that there was it was dead. You remember that? The videos? It's still up on YouTube. Yeah, the West Coast is dead. The Pacific Ocean is dead because of Fukushima radiation. So Jeff Palco unfortunately got suckered in that and he went in debt for thousands, almost $40,000 here. Hang on, you'll see the paperwork. I'm asking for your help here because he's lost hope that these, anything's going to take place. Anything's going to change here. And I'm like, well, hold on, hold on. So if you don't know yet, Dana's up here in his latest video and uh, uploaded December 11th as you can see he says I'm up here in Prince Rupert waiting for a break in the weather for the last six days yeah tomorrow looks good so far you know we're looking for uh, radiation damage no he's not again he's taking pictures there's no actual Geiger canners there's no gamma spectrometers there's no it's just taking pictures now leave a link down below that anyone wants to argue with me you can see the PBS uh, uh, YouTube video here where you see the uh, researchers that were researching the wasting starfish disease on the west coast you get to see some of the footage and how they actually do proper research okay about squaring off an area and photographing every single inch of every square of that entire area and then coming back the following year and re-examining it again and then coming to some type of conclusion okay in the last year we've lost x amount of sea life in that specific area you can't take a picture going to an area that you've never been to and come up with outrageous claims that there's 4,500 species missing many of you have gotten this but what's sad that there's many that don't get it and don't want to do proper research so the links down below watch the PBS and uh, she's the same lady I'm going to be uh, interviewing here from Cornell University uh, Drew Harvell she's also part of that research team so you folks need to find out wh how proper research takes place it's not just taking pictures so he stuck up there and one of the things I'd mentioned folks from the very beginning do you remember I was mentioning a he does not have the proper boat he's gonna to have to get a, an, an enclosure well guess what he got an enclosure now on the boat that cost him another almost four or five thousand dollars and on top of that one of the things I was mentioning is the fact that he's going up there in the winter you can't be going up into these waters in the winter and I realize you know, I could see by the comments, many of you have never been around the ocean, don't know anything about it. It's very sad, wishing them the best of luck, yada, yada, yada. You people need to really get, you need to get real. You get, need to get educated. I'd mentioned in the past, I was first made here of a, of a sail, a 50 foot sailboat here on Vancouver Island. It was actually in the front page of the Times columnist. And, you know, oddly enough, oddly enough, uh, that whole incident, uh, it was a disagreement with the, 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 um, with the police and the Coast Guard, and and Yana was right. They ripped up they, my, the way they tied up the boats to my captain's boat. Uh, they ripped up his gear, twenty six thousand dollars worth of damage, you know. And then they try to test, get the test, get me to testify against my captain. I'm like, you guys need to get real. I warned you from the beginning not to do this. It's very sad. So here again, here we have these zodiacs out on the ocean. It's not the proper type of boat here on the west coast, folks. I hate to say, but you don't know nothing about the ocean. Okay, the waves that are out here are different from, yes, the waves that are here, but they're also way different from the waves that are in here. And you can't even, it's not the proper time of the year to go out there with a boat that's just 
make that clear. So he's up here in Prince Rupert and he's looking for more money because guess what? He ran out of cash. I'm not lying. Go watch the video. Go watch it. He's out of money here. And you know, he's realized that his propane heater doesn't work. And you know, sorry to say folks, he's not going to tell you, but that burn mark on the dog's hair where all the hairs melted, all gone, down to the bare skin, guess how that happened? You got it. The propane heater that's in his, the, 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 those type of propane heaters, the, it's not like there's a big flame coming out. That poor dog didn't know. She went right up to it. Woof! Her, 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 the whole side of the dog caught on fire. Anyways, the dog's still alive. He's still alive at this point. Can someone please tell him to get the hell out of there? It's not the right time of the year to do this type of work. And now he's looking for more money because he has to come up with a better heating system. And then he mentions how he spent all of his $1,200 on a ferry to get up there. I hope he has money to get back. It's sad. Anyways, the locals will put him in his place when he starts pulling out the bullshit saying that everything's disappeared. Yes, because he's up here in Prince Rupert, okay? A lot of fishermen up here and whatnot. And oddly enough, you know, as I'm talking about the waves and the storm and how he doesn't have a proper boat, well, I mean, this is what this the super tanker, all the, this whole disagreement we're having right now about having the pipeline uh, ran right across to the west coast here is because we don't want to have these super tankers running up and down the coastline here, especially with the waves, okay? This is a very dangerous area. So, if you haven't heard yet, this is Kevin D. Blanche, and again, I'll leave the link. And uh, folks, you're not going to believe this, but he's going out on the walk, too, on the Pacific coast. And this is odd because I've been pointing out here how Kevin D. Blanche has been the big promoter of the lies, right down to this latest one here. But first, hold on a second. Just watch. I'm not sure if you've been hearing the latest one. And the latest one, he's been telling you how Reactor 4 is on fire again. Okay, look, here's a picture. Can you see the reactor 4 here? This is reactor 4, okay? The picture is down below. You can go do you can do many searches on reactor 4, okay? The, it was this picture is well spread across the internet. When there's fire, there's usually uh, smoke and you're going to have flames, you're going to have metal that's going to be burnt and showing burnt marks and smoke marks. There's none of that here. I see a little bit of steam coming out. Yes, that's why the pumper was there. Was there cracks in the pool? Uh, I'm not sure about that. I know they've taken out most of these spent fuel rods out so far, so I guess it mustn't be what they're all saying it was, right? And it's very sad because many of them couldn't even understand why that structure was built on the side here and the fourth, uh, why the fifth and fourth floor were torn down to the pool level. It's, it's sad. We, we have people making YouTube videos that can't understand decommissioning of a nuclear plant. Okay, getting back to the video here. Um, in this latest one, Kevin is going out on a walk. Listen to this. Uh, I'm, not make, I'm not making this stuff up, seriously. I'm going to walk along the ocean, along California, as far as I can walk. It'll be months that I'll walk along the beach. The longest walk, oh yeah. Again, that route's to here. It's amazing to me. It's amazing that he's actually going out there on a walk. So, folks, if you're not aware of what's going on here, um, Jeff is getting shy here. He doesn't want to do the interview. He knows if you I'm not sure if you saw that video, but he'd said how all of his paperwork's out in the public and he might as well come up front and he basically laid, the, the, uh, you know, told you folks that Kevin is ignoring him here, not replying to him, and has not provided any paperwork to back up what's happened to the no regrets funds. Okay, so I showed this way back in June here. I'm not sure if you remember, or was it August? I'm sorry. The links are down below. That Thomas Ackerman, he'd received $2,200 to pay for his Jeff flight out to Calgary and back home so he could visit uh, Jeff uh, Palco. Uh, Kevin D. Blanche had received the same. And uh, also I showed how Kevin, uh, sorry, um, Jeff Palco had gone in debt, had taken out a line of credit on his home for $16,000 so Dana could buy this boat, which was, as I was saying from the very beginning, wasn't a proper type of boat to go out and do that type of expedition. But, of course, everyone wanted to ignore me. No, you're nuts. You don't know what you're talking about. I know what I'm talking about. Anyway, so then I went on to show here how Kevin Blanche received $6,000 in that one 
that one check. And I was waiting for um, Jeff Palko's brother to send me more checks. And in the meantime, he sent me an email from Jeff where you got to see where Jeff is wondering what's going on here. He, he'd contributed $18,500 so far towards this investment fund, and he had not heard any single news from uh, Kevin D. Blanche as far as what's going on with the uh, fund and his investment here. And it, anyone who's been watching Kevin D. Blanche, you've all heard initially he said, no, Jeff never gave me a damn penny. And then and this summer when I produced this p document here, all of a sudden he changed his tune. Oh, well, he did give me money and blah, 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 blah. What, what's important is when he did say that Jeff had not given him money, he said that if Jeff had given him money back then, his investment would have increased by 40 percent. So I was saying, folks, then he owes Jeff Palco $18,500 plus 40 percent, because according to Kevin's own words here, he's an investment mogul and he's made money. Well, let's go pay up, bucko. Now's the time. So uh, Jeff has not received a dime. They, they banned him here. Uh, he's banned from the Fukushima website and uh, the Fukushima hounds. Nobody wants to talk to him. They, they totally exclude him. So um, I'm not sure if you heard this footage here, but uh, this is fresh here. This is what, roughly, what, December 9th? Yeah, just a few days ago. And Kevin makes this statement here, and I think I found a solution so we could get Jeff's money back. Here we go. But this painting is the painting that I'm finding out all my art all these years that, you know, maybe the YouTube camera, I'm really starting to get, I've been getting approached by, I got approached by two museums that are interested in that painting. You know, out of blue. You know, they're not interested in anything I do, whatever, black ball, but all of a sudden they're interested in this painting. I don't know why. I really don't know why. I mean, I really love that painting, you know, in a lot of ways. But so, you know, I've got an offer on it, a big offer. A lot of money was offered to me on it, and I told them no. Whoa. He said no, and he's gotten all this money back, all this money from uh, Jeff Palco, and he's now refusing to even answer the phone and give Jeff back his money. What the hell's going on here, folks? So I need a hand here. I really need a hand. So I need you to thumb up this video. I need you to share it with everyone. And I'm going to have a Palco petition coming up. It's going to be the Palco painting petition because I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but he's said it many times in previous videos. Kevin D. Blanche has said it, and so has Jeff said it in a, a recent video, that this painting was all painted over at uh, Jeff's place this summer. Yeah, the same place where Kevin flew out there and picked up that uh, $2,000 check and uh, other cash money because I'm not sure if you, you're aware of that, but... He, he was very clear about that, that there was extra funds there that were that were given to him, you know? It says right here, and the other stuff that was for you to use, or use as needed. So we know that it was at least 18500 given to this guy, and for him to say that he doesn't want to sell a painting, hold on a second. So I need a hand, folks. I really, when they have it in their face, and they all know that we do not accept people scamming and now to come out that they're going to go out on a walk and what we're supposed to send more money again honestly the Pacific genocide started by going into people's wallets and uh, frauding them okay so I need you to, to give this a thumbs up I need you to share this with with everyone we uh, share it on your Twitter share it on your Facebook let's put it out there no more F Fukushima fraud and let's have help Jeff get his money back okay that was my email to him December 10th you can hit the, the keyboard if you want to I mean your spacebar if you want to read it but basically I was saying this has to stop okay so he's lost faith in this he thinks they're just great promoters and they're going to be helped with this they, they're inner circles these are all the people here the the Miss Melky the clown the rad chicks um, Stacy Lane 74 Stacy Anderson there's many of them you may have caught on deep deep cycle what was it deep 13 and uh, nuclear there's a whole bunch of scammers that are promoting this fraud. So I, I need you to, to really uh, give me a hand here, folks. Share this information and let's stop this Fukushima fraud. I'll have a, another video up here within the next day or two on the petition itself and uh, a link to the, to the website so you guys can, and folks, I mean, can uh, sign a petition. Let's get his money back. Jeff uh, should not has gone, has, you know, 
he's sitting at home here on a disability, uh, tight income, and the guy goes out and actually takes out a line of credit on, on his home to help out because he believed that the Pacific Ocean was dying. I don't know what to say. We, we got to work together here, okay? That's all I got to say. We have to work together. Let's, let's end the Fukushima fraud artists.